Hi guys, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon. I'm Steve. I just got back from a Echo Technical Update Service School just now. We had a different instructor this year. His name is Justin Seiler. Excellent information, excellent presentation, excellent job, Justin. Really, really good. Thank you for the hat. Thank you for the beer bottle. You were absolutely correct. It holds exactly two beers. I'm back on the bud today. Not that bud. He also said that these water bottles, you can actually hold water in them too. I'm not so sure about that, but. Why is your firewood look like this, guys? When you cut your firewood like that, you start out straight and it cuts off at an angle one way or another. Try putting that on your chopping block and splitting it properly. Why does it do that? I can think of about four different reasons why it does that. I'm going to take you through those four possibilities. Um, the most common one is going to be near the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. I'll take you through that. I'm going to take you through the first three that are um, a little bit easier to get through. Um, first one is that your chain can be so badly sharpened that that will be a reason that can cause you to actually cut crooked firewood one way or another like that. I'm not going to take you through the sharpening right now because I already have a video on my on my channel. If you go back to my channel and look for the video, you guessed it, called How to Sharpen a Chainsaw. Um, check that out first. Make sure that your, your chain is sharpened properly. I also have a little link right here for you. Three, two, one, right there. Magic. I know. That might only work on mobiles and desktops. If you have a big screen TV, you might not see that thing show up. But click on that so you can rule out the possibility that it's because your chain is sharpened poorly. Moving on to the next one. Um, it could be that you have the wrong chain on it. I'm not going to get into super details right now about gauges of chain and bars. Um... In a nutshell here, it, it, uh, the groove itself in your bar, in your guide bar, the channel that goes in there are different widths. Now, if you have a bar that is a 058 gauge, it's a certain width. You're supposed to match the right chain in that, so you need an 058 chain also, which is the thickness of the drivers of your chain, those little shark tooth shaped looking things on the bottom of your chain, that's your driver. The thickness of that driver needs to match the thickness of the groove in your guide bar. So if you have an 058 gauge bar and you accidentally bought or were sold the wrong chain and the chain is an 050, the drivers are too thin for that groove, and then you're gonna find that your chain flops sideways. If you grab that chain and move it back and forth sideways like this, if it flops over really bad, it could be because you have the wrong chain to begin with. So make sure that your bar and chain match each other. 050 bar, you have to have an 050 chain in it also, or else you're gonna cut crooked firewood. Then we move on to an actual problem with your guide bar itself. Now there's two actual problems that it could be on your guide bar. Um, kind of like we, what we just talked about about having a smaller chain and a bigger bar and it'll flop sideways. Sometimes if your bar is just straight up worn out the groove the channel in your guide bar is just worn too wide you have the proper chain it's matched with that bar but the groove is so worn out that your chain still is going to flop sideways one way or another like that so here's a simple thing that you can check right here even before you take your bar and chain off um, if you've never flipped your bar over um, you know like the old pillow top mattresses you're, they were supposed to be flipped once in a while to get better wear out of them. You can do the same thing with a chainsaw guide bar. That's what they're, they're, they're symmetrical on both sides. They're made to flip once in a while. 
Some guys say they flip their bar every two or three sharpenings to keep wear on, even. If you've never done that, grab the top of your bar. Try this. Grab the top of the, on the top of the bar, grab the chain and move it, wiggle it sideways. You're gonna have even a brand new bar and chain. You're gonna have a tiny little bit of wiggle there so, so it's not tight and it doesn't burn your chain and burn your bar. Grab it on the top, wiggle it. It's gonna have a little wiggle maybe. Then grab the bottom. If the bottom wiggles back and forth way, way more, it's gonna be really noticeable to you. That just means that the bottom side of the bar, the groove is worn out. The top is still good. It might be something as simple as that you can just take your bar and chain off, flip your bar over and uh, put it all back together and then the, now the bottom is going to be nice and tight and the top's going to be loose. That doesn't matter on the top. You're cutting firewood down like this. Now you're probably going to start cutting straighter firewood just by doing that. If you're, if it's really floppy on both sides, your bar is just simply worn out. All you can do is, is buy a new bar at that point. Um, so there's your next suggestion right there. If you need a new bar, I got a link back on my channel, on my description in my channel. If you need a new bar, click on that link in my description and uh, it'll take you to a site where you can actually look through a bunch of bars there if you, and, and buy a new bar if you need to. The most common problem, in my opinion, is this. The rails. Now I showed you what the groove is there in your, in your bar. <clears throat> the two rails that are beside that groove, those are called your bar rails. They wear and they're going to wear unevenly sometimes. If one of those rails is taller than the other one, it's going to literally hold your chain over at an angle to begin with. So you have no chance in that case of cutting a straight piece of wood because your, your chain is not sitting squarely on that bar and it's already kicked over it and you can't, it can't possibly cut straight wood with that. Now, easy way to check that, you can just kind of look down the bar like that, uh, gun barrel it down there. And you can kind of see sometimes with the naked eye that one of them is higher than the other, they're not even. Um, simple way to actually really truly check that, or a good gauge anyway, is to take that bar and stand it up on a flat level surface. See if it stands. It should be able to stand up all by itself. Uh, kitchen table. Go put it on your kitchen table. It's a nice flat level surface. Your wife won't mind. Don't worry about that. I dare you. Hey, here's a flat level surface right here. Check this out. Stand that up like so. That stands up all by itself. All these bars here, some of them stand up and some of them don't. If you can make it stand up like that, it's probably pretty good. Maybe it needs a little fine tuning, but it's a, if you can make it stand like that, it's not too bad. Uh, here's a bar right here that is really, really bad right here. Look at this. You cannot make that stand up. I can actually wiggle it back and forth along that flat surface like this, and I can feel where both rails are touching right there. And it's at an angle. Both rails are touching, and you can't make it stand up. That's a really bad bar. That bar right there is going to cut crooked firewood just like this block that I showed you right here. So how do we fix that then? You got a few options here on how to even those rails back out. Um, number one, the best, the really the best option that you can do, if you have a local small engine shop that you can literally just take that bar in and say, can you guys grind this for me? I would phone ahead because not all small engine shops have the proper machinery to actually grind those rails down uh, square and true again. Um, Phone ahead, if they have it, take it in. It's cheap to get them to do it. If you're like me, you wanna do it yourself, you wanna fix it yourself, I totally get it. Here's how I do it if I don't, if I don't have access to a proper grinder. First thing that you can use, a very uh, 
um, reliable way to do this, an easy way to do it, is if you have a big axe file like this. You can take your guide bar and clamp it in a vise, in your bench vise, and take that axe file and run it back and forth this way across the top of that bar. And you can actually just eyeball it good enough where you know that it's like this, like perp uh, perpendicular, completely flat with that. So this is a 90 degree angle right here. Run that back and forth until your rails are, are smooth on both sides and you know that that file's flat. Now, in a case like that one that I showed you here that won't stand up, the rails are so badly uneven that if they're that bad, you can just take off the majority of the material so you're not there all day with that file. Angle grind or something like that to, to just take off the majority of it. Try to hold it as flat as you can and just buzz it down until it's pretty good. And then you can fine tune it with your ax file. Um, another thing that is a great handy tool, you can actually buy these bar dressers. They are made specifically to even those rails out again. They're more for maintaining the rails instead of reconditioning or restoring something like that. That's why I say maybe take an angle grinder or something like that to get the majority off, fine tune them with this thing. They're just a little jig that uh, you, it's just got a file in there. So take the bar off and put it in your, in your bench vise again so it's nice and tight so you don't have to worry about holding it. And then you literally just run one of these along the side of the bar like this, and it files those uh, rails so they're square with the bar again. Um, these things are really handy. They work really good. Um, you can actually get this exact one right here, this Oregon um, dresser, this exact one right here. If you go back to the description, on my channel again. I also got a link there so you can pick one of those up. They're not that expensive, so check that out. Obviously, when you're filing any kind of metal at all, uh, the side of these bars when you're doing that can be razor blade sharp. They can have a little burr on the side. Wear some leather gloves when you're doing it, just in case you accidentally rub your finger along there when you're doing that. Wear leather gloves. Also, eye protection. I filed some stuff before that where I actually get those burrs, the, the met, you're peeling metal off of there. One of those little pieces, of, one of those little uh, splinters of metal comes off and flips up and hits you in the eye. Man, that hurts. That hurts way, way worse than childbirth. Now that I think about it, I actually don't have a frame of reference to back that statement up, but it actually, it hurts, okay? When you get that bar all tuned up, you know that your chain is sharpened properly, you put that all back on to your chainsaw. Little tip right here, most likely you're still going to be able to wiggle that chain sideways more on one side or the other. Wiggle it on both sides, figure out which side of your bar is the tightest side where you can't wiggle it as much as the other side. Put that side down. So I hope that was helpful guys. Um, I know there's a lot of guys out there. I got four comments on my channel asking for this video. Four guys commented. That means there's a hell of a lot of you guys out there that actually want to know this. You just didn't comment. So share that video with your friends. People want to know this. Um, hit that thumbs up button, that like button. If you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That would be awesome. And uh, what can I say? I think that's it. Cheers from Canada, guys. Steve out.